short recommendation up front. There's gonna be four minutes of me just being emotional and talking to the people that have commented on my work or just potential long-term subscribers. So if you're only here for restoration, skip to the next chapter. <sighs> okay, so here goes. Um, this introduction is completely improvised. Uh, it's one in the morning. Uh, as you can see, I'm wearing my pajamas, my dinosaur pajamas. And uh, the reason I'm recording this right now, and during this ungodly hour, <laughs> is the fact that I couldn't sleep. What kept me awake is the number of feedbacks I have received from you. Uh, which I'm really, really uh, thankful for. And it's been amazing because I have probably never received so much feedback. I have had the channel for six years now and true, I have not really given much uh, space to restoration during this time in the videos, but uh, still it's amazing and it's something completely new for me. So I wanted to share the raw feelings I have about this. And I have also wanted to answer some of the questions or maybe uh, remarks I've been given because there was a lot of com compliments and uh, really just good luck wishing um, sort of uh, messages from you which is like so reassuring and encouraging to hear but there were also some critiques but uh, constructive ones, which is great. I just need some time to maybe adjust to it, maybe find some sort of style, how to present myself. Because, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to working on this. I just create videos about doing what I love and, um, yeah, just get better and improve. And, yeah, I'm just interested in how far this can go. So back to the back to the idea of uh, answering some of the questions or well uh, to give feedback. Uh, one of the things is um, to apologize in advance because there will be three or four video projects that I have pre-recorded. I have uh, finished working on the paintings. I have restored them or we have restored them because actually I'm not the only one working on on the things uh, you have seen so far. Uh, but that will be for another video. There's actually two of us for now. <laughs> and um, uh, what was, yeah, for what I was saying. Okay, <laughs> now I remember, or I reminded myself. There are four projects um, that have been already restored, the paintings are no longer in our studio and I have checked the, um, the stuff I have been able to find in my folders because as we focused more on the work or working on the on the restoring, uh, the video was just really just a byproduct. A lot of you guys have requested the, the videos to be longer and the shots to be more detailed or the parts to be included, like all of the parts, especially the cleaning parts. I have noted, I will try to do all of those things. I just didn't really think before that uh, somehow someone would be interested in this thing so much. The video project I'm about to show you right now. Actually, I chose this one because I have some shots of cleaning and this, look, this was like a huge difference. Let's get to the restoration part. Comparative lesson first. Image shown here is one I have borrowed from Doctorate my girlfriend is currently working on. It shows how many different photo techniques are utilized in restoration. Each has its own specific use, but in a general practice of a freelancer, which we both kinda are, but only on evenings or during the weekends, as we both have a full-time job in galleries. The three techniques I have mentioned in the Apollo and Daphne project are absolutely necessary and often enough for the job. More on them later. First, let's take a quick look together at this dirty beauty. We don't know the author nor the date of creation for this painting, 
The only theoretical thing we know is the current owner has inherited the painting from her grandparent. But we can definitely tell some things for sure just by looking. We know this painting had been restored before. It's very rare to have a painting that is most likely a few hundreds of years old and hasn't undergone an intervention. Now what we are able to see right away is the strong yellowish tint, which means degraded dama varnish and accumulated surface dirt. Also some parts that don't seem to fit, especially because of difference in gloss matte areas. Close-ups also tell you a lot when you spend some time looking, like missing areas in face in this specific picture, and lots of different types of damage, burns, cracks, areas with missing paint layer and so on. Now what Raking Light shows us almost immediately is the fact that the paint layer has been flattened, most likely due to extreme exposure to heat and pressure when someone before us did the old lining. This is especially seen in impastos. This is irreversible and sadly caused by a restorer. Now UV fluorescence, this one is particularly important, even with the thick layer of old and dirty varnish, we can clearly see most of the areas darker ones that signify something non-original on the painting. The yellow line I am freehand drawing here is approximately showing one of the two. First it's either retouchings with highly damaged or almost non-existent original or overpaints with original hidden underneath. Now we could use some of the photo techniques shown at the beginning to tell us more here, but since the budgeting was limited and the equipment required for those is not something you as a starting restorer have at your disposal straight away, but most importantly we knew we would have to clean the painting anyway, there was little need for that. So we shall find out the hard way. By hard, I mean at this point we have no idea how well it will be possible to remove the unwanted. Now you get the gist with the yellow line. There's much more to mark and I don't really want to do it. What client gets at this point is treatment proposal with preliminary inspection findings and photographs. High resolution, whole painting, front and back side, different spectres, close-ups or even macro photography. Just for comparison, this is what the basic proposal looks like. Not too much text and just a few photos. Now on the other hand, this is a full restoration report from a project I did as a part of my diploma thesis. Includes all of the steps done, facts, findings, materials used, chemical analysis with almost every little detail captured in different phases of the process. But about that maybe some other day. I mean about the extent of what can be research on artworks. There is not a video about my diploma work, as sad as it makes me, because hell I could talk at length about that. I would like to remind here that when we do a restoration proposal for a client, we only know what we have judged based on different photo techniques and optical inspection of the artwork. No tests of solubility or so-called cleaning tests are done before the agreement from the owner. So once the price has been agreed on, we can only hope it will be enough to cover the expenses for the restoration. Otherwise we are doing a heavily underpaid job, which was the case here. But we learn with these sort of mistakes as it's impossible to finish the job half-heartedly and still make it look presentable and good. So the client didn't want to spend too much on this restoration but wanted the painting to look cleaned. So we had to adjust the proposed steps to fit into budgeting. For example, the painting had been lined in the past and as much as we would have liked to remove this one and see the original backside, the lining was still functional and there was no absolute need to remove it. So now for the actual work. First, try cleaning with special sponges for free dust removal. Nothing difficult, but important. Because if skipped, an unnecessarily stronger solvent would be required to remove the dirt that has become bonded with the varnish underneath or with the original. However, it never stops being a surprise just how dirty a painting can get. Then we start with solubility tests. These small windows you can see here are what it looks like. Stability of different colors or pigments underlying the varnish with dirt have to be tested. We start small in areas that are not the main focus of the work. It's a safety measure. Alteration between visible light and UV fluorescence is crucial here. Modus operandi here is to start with the weakest solvents and slowly increase until we have achieved a desired result without damage to the original. The usefulness of keeping the cotton swabs used for tests is in ability to come back and check the amount of dirt seen in visible light and that of varnish seen in UV and compare the results. Often a solvent or even a combination of organic solvents in their free form is not enough or not specific enough to remove the unwanted, as was the case here. After a number of attempts we were able to find the efficient and safe method in the form of emulsion gel. 
That means it uses both organic solvents and a portion of water-based system with regulated pH. Applied with a brush with some of mechanical action, then using a cotton swab with rinsing solution. Now, just sit back and enjoy the process. This is just a work in progress shot with comparative UV photography. A few photos to illustrate the process of the cleaning. Here, almost finished. You can see just how big of a difference it meant and with the final local touches. Now what you see on the left are areas with old fillings. Besides some small adjustments needed, it wasn't a bad filling so we used it as the base for retouching and with a bit of isolation varnish we are good to start. This is a part that doesn't require much talking, starting with bigger areas of background as it's clear what's missing. Retouching in layers using pigments bound by resin, restoration grade of colors. They have to be bound by a different medium than that of the original, which is oil here, so it can be easily distinguishable and reversible.
However, there was something I wasn't sure about. How to finish the retouching as a reconstruction was necessary. Naturally, as a restorer, we cannot alter the painting to our liking or preferences. However, there is also the appearance to consider what the piece of art most probably had originally looked like. We found a fragment in the sky that made very little sense. At the time we had no idea what it was and thought it was just a cloud in the sky. This painting depicts four fathers of the church and it's definitely not one of a kind. Many artists have captured this topic and the representation and depiction is very similar in all of those cases. But after more research we have found a painting by Jakob Jordans that's so similar to this that it also made me believe it could have been his preparatory study for the more finished counterpart. But as that is mirrored horizontally it might also have just been an inspiration and this painting is actually younger. But those are just assumptions. That's how we have realized the fragment is actually a part of a dove's wing. Having consulted the owner and using the found reference with alteration to adapt the different, more loose and sketch-like style in the painting, we have made a reconstruction of the dove and the piece of cloth of the puto. And that's how the work was finally finished. I hope you have enjoyed watching this, maybe even learned something new, and I do hope to see you come here again. Every like, comment and subscription is much appreciated. Until then, be well. Bye. Now at this point you might have thought the story of this painting has finished with us. But sadly, that was not the case here. What happened is this. Yeah. Um, after a week, I guess, after I have returned the painting to its owner who was by the way, really overjoyed and couldn't thank me enough. What basically happened is that she didn't want to wait until someone has installed a proper hanging system for the new one that we have adjusted to the painting. Now, I have not talked about that in the video before. What I mean is that we have changed the hanging system uh, instead of just one in the center for two on both sides, which is just much more secure and overall better. But as she originally only used the one in the middle, she had only one hook in the wall. So she just used a piece of old thread to create a triangle to hang the painting onto the one hook that was available on the wall already. And by this point I think you can guess how this story ends. The thread just snapped and the painting fell. And it fell onto a monitor, which explained the huge hole in the upper right corner. Oh so yeah, now it's back in the studio and we are gonna fix it. So yeah, the story doesn't end here, but such is life, and it's not actually that bad. Well, yeah, it is, but now it's okay. Now it's really all from me today. Have a lovely evening. Bye.